Hello, my name's Alvin, and in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to make your very own spark gap transmitter. So the first thing we're going to need for this project is a 9 volt battery, but in my case, I'm going to be using a house adapter that plugs into the, the wall outlet. And what this adapter does is it takes the 120 volts AC from my house and it converts it to 9 volts DC and that's exactly what we need. We're also going to need two nails or screws. You'll also need a spare bit of wood and this is what we're going to drive our screws into to create our spark gap. We're also going to need a couple of alligator clips. We're also going to need to steal the circuitry from one of those electronic fly swatters. This is what creates our spark. Now you can get an electronic fly swatter for around $5 to $15, but I like to use the cheaper ones because they have less voltage, and they actually don't kill the flies. They actually just stun them, and they just fall to the ground. They're supposed to kill the flies, but they don't. Um, so you could actually say that the voltage that comes out of this doesn't kill a fly. Now what I've done here is I've just taken the circuitry and I've just put it inside of a paper towel tube and I just put tape around it and I extended the wires a bit so I can use it from a safe distance if I had to. And finally we're going to need some kind of switch. Now uh, this is a Morse code straight key that I got off of eBay for around $12 and it works perfectly for this project. I almost forgot one of the most important things. Um, we're going to need to receive our transmission somehow, and to do that, we're going to use an AM radio. The first thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and drive those two screws into your bit of wood so that the heads of them are barely touching each other. There's just the slightest gap between them. So, now that we've put our two nails into the bit of wood, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the out leads from our fly swatter. These are the two wires that are connected to the nets of the fly swatter. This is what actually kills the fly. And the way the fly swatter works is that it has um, three mesh wire lines. And the one in the middle is the positive one. And on the two outside ones, they're negative. And what happens when the fly goes inside, when you go to swat the fly, the fly goes in between the positive and the negative lead, completing the circuit, and then the voltage goes through the fly, and the fly dies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the negative and positive leads, and I'm going to go ahead and twist them onto our screws here. Just like that. And if you check it out, we're pretty much done with our spark gap transmitter already. If we just take our power supply and put it into the circuit from the fly swatter, you'll see that we get a nice spark between the head of those two nails there. So all we have to do now is hook this up to our switch so that we can control that spark. And the way that most of these power adapters work is the inside is your positive and your outside is your negative. Now I've got my red wire as my negative wire and that's just a mistake I did when I was putting the circuit inside of the tube. So if I take my negative and I touch the outside with the positive going on the inside, you'll see that it sparks it up nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my positive lead, I'm going to just fold it like this to give it a bit more width, and I'm going to go ahead and just stick it inside our power adapter here. Whoop. There you go. And now instead of just go ahead and touching it to here, I'm going to hook this up to our switch. And I'm going to do that using a couple of alligator clips. So I'm going to take this clip. I'm going to touch the outside of our adapter. I'm going to take the negative end that connects to the fly swatter. I'm going to go ahead and screw that on to 
our key right here. There you go. And I'm going to go ahead and take this nut off from our key because we don't need it. And I'm going to connect the other end of the alligator clip to right here. And now we'll see that when I click on my key, it sparks up the spark gap nicely. And that's pretty much it. We've made our spark gap transmitter. So now that we've made our transmitter, it's time to receive. All we have to do is get ourselves an AM band radio. And I'm just going to hook it up to a speaker I have over here. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. Turn the volume down a bit. And we're going to find a station that's just static like we're at right now. There, I like this one. So I'm going to leave that right here. And now you're going to hear what um, a person on a cruise ship in the early 1900s would hear on the spark gap. So downstairs we've got this record player, this beautiful record player that my neighbors were throwing away that I was able to fix. It, this record player doubles as a radio, so we're going to go ahead and tune in onto the AM band. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and find a channel that's just static, like right here, and I'm going to run back upstairs to where the transmitter is, and we're going to see if you can pick anything up.